In this video, um, I'm going to talk about how we can use uh, polar or cylindrical or spherical coordinates uh, to make integration with uh, certain regions and functions easier. So um, let's go ahead and start with the polar slash cylindrical coordinates. Uh, just as a reminder here, I have all of our identities set up um, for how to convert between our Cartesian coordinates and the polar coordinates and then going the opposite direction as well. And um, the reason I say, I do want to say before I jump into this, uh, the reason I say polar slash cylindrical coordinates is because um, if we ignore the z equals z part, everything here is working in polar coordinates. And then, I mean, like, <clears throat> beyond that, cylindrical coordinates is just saying, okay, we're going to let the z component be whatever z was originally. Uh, so cylindrical coordinates and polar coordinates are really very closely related in that way. They're basically the same thing. It's just that we're now adding a, a third dimension to that. So um, when we're integrating for uh, polar and cylindrical coordinates, uh, something like that, um, or when we're integrating in general, there's kind of three parts that we want to keep in mind. Um, so if we consider kind of like a, a double integral type case, uh, so we're integrating over some region omega, um, and then we have a function f of x, y. Um, and then because we have two variables, two integrals are our little uh, dx, dy thing can be abbreviated with just da or d area, basically. Um, this means it, this is dx times dy or dy times dx, either way. It's just the general expression for that. Um, so there's three things here that we have to think about converting. We have to think about changing our region over to uh, the polar coordinates, our function over to the polar coordinates, and then our um, final piece here, uh, da or the dx dy over into the polar coordinates as well. So um, <clears throat> this piece right here is really the kind of tricky part because we've seen a lot about how to deal with functions and how to deal with uh, the regions. But this guy right here, this turns into r times dr d theta. Because um, I mean, our goal when we're working, when we're trying to move over into the polar or cylindrical coordinates is to get everything in terms of r and theta. So when we do that uh, for the dA, it just becomes R times dRd theta. This R here is extremely important. Don't ever forget that. Um, the reason that it's there is similar to why maybe some extra pieces might pop up in like U sub, for example. It's kind of all related to that, um, although it's a little bit beyond the scope of this video to go into exactly why that's there. But just don't forget it when we make our swap here. And the other thing that I want to point out is that these two right here, they can be in really either order depending on what the problem itself calls for. So this could also be d theta, dr instead. Um, we also have maybe the triple integral case when we are including that third component, z. And then instead of uh, da, we get dv, which is really just the same idea as like, uh, you know, the d z, dy, dx, or really any other order that we want to put. This is just the general expression for all three. Um, <clears throat> and again, this represents volume because now we're working in three dimensions. So same idea here. We want to make sure to take care of the region, take care of the function, and then we also have to take care of our uh, little uh, differential type thing here. And that is going to be represented with, well, r, dr, d theta, dz, because really all we're doing here is saying, okay, well, we're still working with this same idea of polar coordinates, but now we're just adding a third component of z. So again, uh, this can be any order here, depending on what the problem calls for. And then, like I said, after you've taken care of your differential, all you got to do is worry about your region and uh, the function. So those are the other two pieces that we have to do. So convert f and uh, your region omega into the polar slash uh, cylindrical expression using your identities. So let's walk through a quick example with this. So here um, we have that our region, I guess I'll, I'll represent it with a D this time instead of omega, it doesn't really matter, um, be equal to the set of uh, points X, Y, such that um, X is greater than or equal to zero. And then four is less than or equal to X squared plus Y squared, less than or equal to 16. 
Okay. Um, and then over this region, we will find the integral over d um, of 1 over x squared plus y squared and then dA. Okay, so in order to be able to compute this integral, um, this is one of those integrals that it really is a lot easier if you approach it with uh, polar or the slash cylindrical coordinates. Uh, so we're going to make that conversion from the Cartesian coordinates over into uh, the polar coordinates. So we need to convert our bounds of integration, which is D, uh, our function F of X, Y, and um, our differential DA into polar coordinates. And at this point, I mean, the reason we're working with polar coordinates is because we're not really too concerned about what Z is in this case. So let's go ahead and start with our bounds. So um, our goal is going to be get to get D to be written as some collection of points R theta. And so we just need to find restrictions for R and theta that we can throw into our integral. Let's take a look at what we are uh, working with here. So um, we want, um, it's really kind of like the area between two circles, uh, the circle that has radius two and circle that has radius four. So if this is, we can call it two, 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 and this be four, four. So we're looking for um, this region right in here. And uh, so we need restrictions for R and we need restrictions for theta. If we look at this right here, uh, that four less than or equal to X squared plus Y squared less than or equal to 16. Remember that R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. So four has to be less than or equal to R squared less than or equal to 16. So R itself has to be between two and four, which kind of makes sense because we're looking at the region that is between two circles of radius two and has radius four. Okay, so the other piece that we have to worry about now is going to be theta. And in worrying about theta, we can kind of look at our um, thing here, assign it the ideas from the unit circle. So zero degrees is along the x-axis, pi over two degrees is along the y-axis. You have pi, three pi over two slash, um, negative pi over two, which is really probably what we're going to want here. And we want theta to be able to start all the way down here and go all the way up to pi over two. So we want it to encompass all of this region here for theta. So that means that our bounds for theta start at negative pi over two and end at positive pi over two. Um, and the reason that we start at negative pi over 2 is because we really just want to make sure that it passes through 0 instead of like, you know, if we start at 3 pi over 2, then we pass through 2 pi, and then we pass to, uh, I guess it'd be like 5 pi over 2 or something like that, which really just gets kind of messy. It's a lot cleaner if we say start at negative pi over 2, pass through 0, go up to pi over 2. So these are our bounds for theta, and that's what becomes our domain here. And that's the information that we'll use to plug into our integrals. So 2 is less than or equal to r, less than or equal to 4. And uh, negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi over 2. Okay. Uh, and then converting f of x, y is really quite simple here because uh, this x squared, y squared is just r squared. So that's really all there is to that. Um, <clears throat> and then da we said was equal to uh, r dr d theta. This is every single time. Do not forget that r there. It's very, very important. So if we want to look at our whole integral, let's put 1 over x squared plus y squared and then dA. Uh, this is equal to, and I'm going to fill in my um, bounds after I order my dr d theta. Um, so I have this guy right here becomes 1 over r squared. The dA becomes r dr d theta. And I just kind of put it in parentheses to denote that this r uh, 
did not result from converting our function here, but it'll still get multiplied in. And then since we're doing R first for our integration, um, I'm gonna put those bounds on the inside. So two to four, and then my bounds for theta would go next at negative pi over two, two pi over two. So that's pretty much all there is for setting up the integral. Let's go ahead and integrate this thing. So um, we had had negative pi over two to pi over two integral from two to four, one over r squared r dr d theta. So this is equal to the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two integral from two to four of one over r dr d theta. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, this is a fairly simple integral to take. That's just a uh, natural log of r. So we have integral from negative pi over two to pi over two. So natural log, absolute value of r evaluated from two to four d theta. <clears throat> so that's equal to the integral from negative pi over two to pi over two, natural log of four divide minus natural log of two d theta. Um, and I can actually kind of simplify this down a little bit farther uh, using log properties. This is the same thing as natural log of four divided by two. So um, what do I mean by that? Four over two, um, like so. So that's just gonna give me natural log of two. And then we also can integrate with respect to theta here and that's just gonna introduce theta and then evaluate from negative pi over two to pi over two. And um, <clears throat> theta from negative pi over two up to uh, pi over two is just going to give me um, pi. So And uh, that's really pretty much all there is to that. So that was pretty straightforward. Okay. Let's look at spherical coordinates. All right. So I've already got a sheet set up here with our identities on it. Again, just to remind us of what those looked like. Um, so when we're working in spherical coordinates, we're always going to be looking at a triple integral because spherical coordinates are representative of a three-dimensional space. Um, not like a two-dimensional space, like some cylindrical coordinates could be, or, a, or polar coordinates, for example. Um, so we're always going to wind up working with a triple integral. So we have triple integral over omega of some function in terms of x, y, and z, and then d, v again. Okay, so this is kind of the same setup that we started with uh, for the triple integral earlier. Um, d, v again is referring to volume, and we still have to deal with converting the bounds the function, and then our uh, differential. So uh, this differential is really the one piece that we, we haven't talked about yet, just like in the previous part. So um, this is going to become rho squared sine of phi, and then d rho, uh, d theta, and then d phi, like so. Um, so it's the same idea here uh, where you wind up with this extra thing that's get gotten multiplied in, again, is part of the same idea of, um, you know, like a use substitution type thing. We are changing the variables. Um, and then these guys can be in any order, depending on what the problem calls for. And uh, we'll look at a problem in another video, actually a couple of problems in another video, where um, it is actually important the way that you order these. So you're allowed to rearrange these depending on the needs of the problem. So I'll oh, make a little note here. Spherical coordinates are always 3D. Okay, so then, I mean, like, after you've done this piece here, we still have to take care of the boundary and the function, so we also convert f and omega into the spherical coordinates using our identities. There we go. Let's go ahead and do an example. <clears throat> So in this one, we have um, omega equal to x, y, z, um, such that the square root 
of x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to z. Um, x is greater than or equal to zero. And we also have that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 16. And we are going to find the triple integral over omega of x times dv. Or, well, not times dv, but x dv. Um, <clears throat> so the way to approach this, since we've kind of got some a boundary here that looks like a sphere, um, it would really kind of, might be a good idea to approach this using spherical coordinates. But, and actually, if we kind of remember back to our, uh, a video earlier, our first video on the cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Um, this is really quite a similar setup. The only thing is that we've just kind of chopped our region in half by requiring x to be greater than zero. So um, let's take a look at what our space looks like, but this will wind up being spherical coordinates. So um, our goal is going to be to take our domain and write it as uh, rho theta phi. And then um, we got to come up with restrictions for each of those. And our space is going to look something kind of like this. We remember from earlier, it was kind of like an ice cream cone shape because we have our... Um, We have our uh, <clears throat> our sphere kind of creating the overall bounds for this. Let's so we have four, negative four, um, negative four, and then four. So our sphere reaches up and over something kind of like this. Can I trace a shadow of that around? Right, but then our cone is going to reach up and touch that. So. looks something kind of like this and also is going to include this kind of ice cream top shape so this is from our cone and then we're restricting x to be greater than or equal to zero which means that in reality the part that we want is really just well i should specify this is our x-axis in the positive direction y-axis in the positive direction um so we really just kind of want this part of the cone right here that faces long. Our positive x direction, like so. So it's really just going to be this portion right here. Now, uh, we have to determine rho, um, omega, and phi. Uh, rho is going to be the easy one, so let's go ahead and start with that one. The reason I say it's the easy one is because we already know that it has to be less than or equal to 16. Um, because we have the uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared less than or equal to 16. So rho squared has to be less than or equal to 16, which means that rho has to be between 0 and 4. And that kind of makes sense because if we look at what we want rho to be, um, we want it to kind of start down here at the base and then go up here and touch the top of that um, sphere, which means that it has to have, well, the radius 4 of the sphere. Um, now looking at theta, theta is also going to be fairly straightforward uh, because that's what tells us how much it sweeps out in the x and the y axis or x and y plane. And we only want the part that goes from, again, if this is zero pointing in the positive x direction, um, and then pi over 2 in the positive y direction, pi, and then uh, 3 pi over 2 over here in the negative y direction. Um, we want it to start down here and be able to come up and around this way, only taking half of um, our xy plane, but we always want it to be the half that x is positive in, and that is going from, well, negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2. And that's for theta. So we know that negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi over 2. And uh, we also determined in our previous video that uh, 
uh, phi, which is what goes from along our z-axis here. It starts at zero and is able to go all the way down to um, pi if we go down to the negative z-axis here. We want it to start at zero and be able to go out to this line right here, which is really just pi over four. Um, so it's allowed to swing down pi over four degrees or radians. So it starts at zero, can only go halfway down to the xy plane. So that's pi over four, just like so. Okay, so that's what we're going to use to describe our domain here. Rho is between zero and four. Um, theta is between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. And then uh, phi is between zero and pi over four. So these are going to form our bounds of integration here. And now we still have to com convert um, the inside and our dv. So f of x, y, z is equal to x, which means that when we take f and write it in terms of rho, theta, and phi, we're going to get, uh, if we go back to our identities, x is equal to rho sine phi cosine theta. Um, and then we said that dv is equal to rho squared sine phi um, d rho uh, d theta d phi. So if we want to rewrite this completely, triple integral over omega x dv is equal to, well, we still have a triple integral. And then we have x becomes rho sine phi phi uh, cosine theta phi squared sine of phi. Oh no, okay. And then we have d rho d theta d phi. This is all attached to the end of this integral. I just ran out of space there. Um, and then I still have to define my bounds of integration according to this order right here. So we're starting with rho, which goes from zero to four. Uh, d theta, which is gonna go from negative pi over two to pi over two, and then phi is between zero and pi over four. And that's pretty much all there is to setting up that integral. Let's go ahead and integrate it. So um, we had integral from zero to pi over four, integral from negative pi over two to pi over two, and integral from zero to four, uh, rho sine phi cosine theta, and I'm gonna run out of space again, rho sine of phi, and then d rho uh, d theta d phi. Again, ideally all this would be on the same line, but apparently I just didn't plan ahead well enough. Um, so, but I mean, like I can compress this down a little bit. Um, this is the integral from zero to pi over four, integral from negative pi over two to pi over two, Integral from zero to four of, uh, it'll be rho, oh no. Yeah, rho squared. Um, so we'll have uh, rho cubed uh, sine squared phi. Um, cosine theta, and then d rho, d theta, d phi. Um, so then I can go ahead, since everything here is just a product of different pieces here, I can split it up into product of integrals. So I get zero to pi over four of my phi function, and then integral from negative pi over two to pi over two of my theta function, and then integral from zero to four of rho cubed row. Okay, so um, now at this point, I can um, integrate each one of these pieces individually. Uh, this one right here, I recommend using a uh, power reduction formula uh, for sine squared. There's also one for cosine squared that's quite similar. Um, zero to pi over four of, it's one half, one minus cosine two pi is what we get there, um, d phi, 
integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of cosine theta d theta. And then this is times, not plus, um, integral from 0 to 4 rho cubed d rho. Um, now, each one of these, you just kind of integrate the way that you normally would. Um, And uh, from this, we're going to get um, one half theta minus one fourth sine of two. Oops, that shouldn't be a theta. That should be a phi. Um, two phi. And then this is times um, this integral right here. I'm going to get sine of theta evaluated from. Ah, Got to evaluate this one. Uh, zero to pi over four. This is evaluated from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And then this is times, once again, uh, rho 1 fourth, rho to the fourth, um, 0 to 4. Uh, so out of this, what we're going to get, just plugging everything in. Um, so 1 half times pi over 4 minus 1 fourth, um, sine of it'll be pi over two and then this next piece will be zero so i'm just going to leave that off um times sine evaluated from pi over two minus sine of negative pi over two and then times uh one fourth row to the fourth and uh four raised to the fourth power is going to be um 256. All right, so um, from this, I'm going to get pi over 8 minus this is 1 fourth times this right here is just going to wind up being 2 because we have a 1 minus negative 1, so 2, and then times 1 fourth times 264, that's going to give me, or 256, that gives me 64. Um, So 128 divided by 8 should be um, 16. It comes out to uh, 16. So 16 pi and then minus 128 divided by 4 is um, 32. Oh, man. 32. There we go. Okay, so um, that's what you wind up with after you go through that whole process. Anyway, uh, so that's pretty much all there is to it. The big idea is just making sure that you convert all the pieces of that integral over and then uh, go through and integrate. So uh, believe it or not, converting can save you, converting these uh, these systems around can really save you quite a bit of work. So um, yeah, I highly recommend it anytime that you have the opportunity to do so. so. All right, I'll see you guys next time.